morning it's the middle of may so it's time for my mid-may wrap up and i've read seven books this time um quite i was going to say disappointing it's not disappointing because i've had a good time reading them but i haven't had one five star yet which i suppose is the disappointing bit i started off with uh, a certain hunger by chelsea c chelsea c summers that i got from netgalley and this is full of blood and sex and gore and it's about um Dorothy, who's a successful food writer and critic who loves sex as much as she has, loves food. We have very explicit descriptions of both. And the um, descriptions are almost interchangeable. You know, when she's describing sex, she, she could always be using the same words to describe the food. But then she develops a certain hunger and a certain taste for something that is... A taboo really uh, a very interesting book it's a it's her memoir that is what she's written she's written her memoir while she's in jail so that was that one the second one was also another net galley book and this was a thriller and it's called such a good mother by helen monks tacker and this i really i really enjoy this one it's about um a mum whose son goes to the Wolf Academy, which is this extremely elite school. And it's run by a group of very successful women, you could say. It's a clique, and you're either in or you're not, and she gets invited to join this group. But while she gets privileges from being in the group, there is also danger. And the women in this are really evil. You want to scream at them. The next one I read was the Booker International. Um, it's on the Booker International shortlist. And it's Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro. And I love this one. It's almost a crime novel because Elena will not accept her daughter's suicide because Elena knows that her daughter would never commit suicide. And it's her journey through the space of one day to try and find someone who will help her to discover the truth because Elena suffers from Parkinson's and her body will not allow her to do the investigating herself. So she goes off on a journey to find somebody who will help her. But along the way, she finds truths that she doesn't even want to think about. I love that one, I really do. The fourth one was another net galley and it's another thriller and it's the latest by Ruth Ware, The It Girl and it's set in Oxford so you've almost got sort of dark academia vibes and you've got two timelines. You've got the university timeline and then you've got 10 years later and Hannah, she goes to Oxford University, first year student and her roommate, she shares a room with April Coots Cliventon and they become friends. April is the it girl, she's got everything, she's got wealth, she's got beauty, she's vivacious, she's sparkling, people are drawn to her but she's murdered and then we switch 10 years later and everything comes to the four again because Hannah gets contacted by a journalist who says that um, new evidence has come out and the guy who just has just died in prison for the murder maybe he didn't do it after all so that's that thriller the next one was um it, I'm, I'm looking at past prize winners and this was the 1996 orange prize winner and orange later became the Women's Prize for Fiction. And that was A Spell of Winter by Helen Dunmore. And it's set pre-World War I, and it follows Kathy and Rob, brother and sister who live in a estate, rural estate that's running down with their grandfather. Mother has disappeared, she's gone off um, to uh, warmer climes to discover herself. And father is in a sanatorium. So these two are left 
almost isolated with grandfather and Kate, who's her servant. And we touch on, um, we go on to forbidden love and it's written from Kathy's perspective. She's the narrator. So we have her experiences growing up, her closeness with her brother and everything that transpires. Um, yes, I enjoyed that one as well. The next one, again, one of the prize winners that I'm looking at, and this was the International Booker Prize winner in 2016, uh, The Vegetarian. And I went into this one not knowing at all what it was about. And it's set, it's divided into three. You've got three different points of view. Each section is a different point of view. And they follow on, so this is, they, they sort of follow on because you've got gaps. You've got part two is several years after part one and part three is several years after part two. And um, Yong Hai, she decides she's going to be a vegetarian and she stops eating meat. And it's the repercussions of that action because her family see it as a sort of rebellion that, you know, things like that don't happen. You know, her family are meat eaters, her parents are meat eaters, her siblings are meat eaters, her husbands are meat eaters. And for her suddenly to say, I'm not eating meat totally alien to them and it's her isolation as she keeps to her her belief of not eating meat it was very hypnotic writing this one it's quite a very powerful novel and the final one it's the follow-up to for the wolf by hannah witten and it's for the throne and it's the second of the duology and because this comes out in June, on the 9th of June, uh, the publishers don't want me to publish any reviews until a week before. So I can't say anything about this one yet. You'll have to wait for my vlog. But it's one I enjoyed and want to look out for. So, um, book of the first half of the month. I think I'll go for Ellen and O's. That was the one that really sort of moved me. Um, but I'm still waiting for that five star. Hopefully I'll get a five star in the second half of May. Fingers crossed. So happy reading. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.